Now you're probably thinking, oh, what is this? I clicked on this for a keyboard video. This is a keyboard channel, uh, not a pillow channel. Well, howdy hey, Hippio Tech here, and I'm gonna be taking a nap. Okay, okay, I know nap time's fun, but I will be taking a look at a keyboard. In this case, Royal Kludge sponsored me to take a look at their G68. But they said I could do whatever I wanted, so <laughs> I'm filling it with the foam from my $100 pillow. Why? Who knows, but stick around, it could be good. I'll also be building it out with some stock matchas that I got from Prevail Key Company, they're just a JWK recolor, and these Mojito PBT keycaps that I got from Banggood. Ignoring the pillow, this build comes out to about $160. Will it be worth it? Will the pillow do anything? Well, this will be a bit of a longer video, so grab some hippo snacks, stick around, and find out. Hippio from the Blue Void here to say that I want to make big number become small number, and 72.5% of you are not subscribed. The only way we can make big number become small number is if you hit subscribe. Thank you! Anyways, as I mentioned before, this video is sponsored by Royal Clutch, and they sent out two of their keyboards for me to check out. The G68 and the G100. So, Hippio disclosure time, my contingency with any of my keyboard sponsors is that I get to say whatever I want about the products I get to check out. Now, nobody's perfectly bias-free, but I try and be as objective as possible while still being able to eat. You know, it's a win-win. Anyways, the info I'll be telling you about today is from my own experience or just pulled straight from their store page. I'm not reading from a script or anything like that. I never script my videos. A little bit of background about this board is it's one of the top selling boards on Amazon, at least in America. Now, coming in at $75, it's a little bit more pricey compared to some budget boards, but at the time of making this video, there is a 10% off coupon on Amazon that makes it like a decent competitor to the SK68, because it's not optical. Now, I should start this video by saying, this is a keyboard that's marketed towards gamers and not enthusiasts. Everything about the listing says gamer, gamer time, that type of thing. And, you know, we're enthusiasts, we hold stuff to a weird standard. So I, I'm gonna try and be at least kind of nice to it, while still taking an enthusiast approach with it. Because, you know, I'm an enthusiast. Okay, so product info time. You can buy this in classical red or the Dolch, which is basically just white alphas or dark alphas. And it comes with Gateron reds, blues, or browns. Oof. Personally, I was sent the version with blues, which I'd normally be kind of angry about, but you know, we're gonna be taking those out anyway, so I guess it doesn't really matter. This board is, oh, oh gosh, yikes. This board is low profile, and you can see all of the switches while using it. This could be a perk, but personally, I think low profile boards tend to sound worse than higher profile boards. The keycaps that come on this thing are actually relatively nice, and I'll be checking them out just a little bit closer later. Now, what I see as personally separating this board from other budget boards on the market is that it offers a lot of options as far as usage. All right, what does that mean, Hippio? You're being vague. Okay, okay. Well, you see this little dongle right here? Hey, little dongle. You can use this thing with 2.4 gigahertz wireless, Bluetooth, or wired, and that's a lot of options. Now, I can't decide if these are die sub or double shot, but they're PBT keycaps, they're relatively thick, and they're honestly pretty good. Unlike the stock Gateron Blues. Oof. But hey, we can pull those out because this board is hot swap and supports five pin switches. Now, my eagle eyed north facing LED spotters will spot the north facing LED. Now, this is kind of a relic of RGB gamer times, and I'm hoping it disappears from boards soon as it causes a little bit of interference when using Cherry Profile keycaps, which I'll show later, don't worry. Now, I'm sorry you had to hear that. You're probably thinking, oh no, my ears, oh god, Hippio, they're bleeding, please help, Hippio, no. Uh, to that I say sorry, but uh, stay tuned, I'll make it up to you. So I think this board would sound moderately okay with reds or browns, but Gateron blues are kind of unsavable, and I can't really do much about that. We'll be making this sound pretty decent actually. Let me just get my magic out of the way and bop bop bop. And the keycaps are off, revealing the blues, yeah. But let's get rid of these with just a tiny bit more magic, right? Oh God, that was a little bit more violent than I wanted. So, sorry guys, my magic is a little bit out of control today, uh, but there'll be a lot of it in this video. So because this board is hot swap, I did not have to desolder to remove any of those switches, and I won't have to solder to put any in. This is great and really wonderful for beginners, as soldering is bad for your health, something like that. Also, let me just pull out my wow stick. Uh, wow's in the chat, please, thank you, but don't spam it, just wow. put it once. This is an electric screwdriver if you want one, check out the link in the description. To disassemble this board, it's actually a lot simpler than a ton of other boards, and you kind of just unscrew a couple screws, 
pull out a couple ribbon cables, and you're done. It's disassembled. Wow, congratulations. Good work. Oh man, all that good work's got me really needing a nap. I think I'm gonna take one of these naps on my nice $100 pillow. Now, story behind this pillow. I bought it, thinking it would be good. Uh, I really didn't like this pillow, so it sits in my closet, and it's kind of just the bane of my existence. But it's got some really nice memory foam in it, and I'm gonna be taking some of that out, and taking a nap as well. And then I'll be putting that memory foam in a keyboard. Why? I don't know, I got bored, I've got manic energy, and what else am I gonna do? Like, try to fill it with Play-Doh or something? That'd be outrageous, ugh. Anyways, a couple handfuls is probably enough, and maybe even more than enough. I, I don't know how I thought that would fit in this board. It's time for Hippio Disclosure Time. Massive Hippio Disclosure Time. I do not recommend doing this in any of the boards with batteries. Uh, just please don't do this with boards with batteries. It could be a potential fire hazard. It could not let the battery get rid of some of its heat. I don't really know how batteries work, but yeah, I just kind of don't recommend doing this on any board with a battery. But I'm doing it anyways because of science. But don't do this. Do not do it. All right, is that enough disclosures? Maybe, who knows. So I filled this kind of just overflowing and here's a bit of a closer look. This is like cooling memory foam or something like that. So that's why there's the little weird blue specks. I, so, you know, maybe it'll cool my battery. <laughs> No, seriously, don't don't do this. <laughs> Anyways, you fill keyboards with something that way you can dampen some of the reverberations and make it sound less hollow and pingy if you've got really pingy hollow switches. Now here on the Hippio Tech YouTube channel, we like to get creative. We like to put Play-Doh and stuff in boards and you know, we're no exception here. Honestly, one handful was enough and I think I could fill another like, I don't know, 20 keyboards or so with that $100 pillow. That's still a really bad return on investment. I don't like that pillow. But I digress. That was probably why all of you were here. And you know, you could stick around for the rest of the build, right? So as far as the rest of the build goes, we've got these matcha switches that I got from Prevail Key Company. Prevail Key Company is one of my affiliates and they sent me these for free. Uh, these are not lubed up and they're stock, but I think they're relatively okay stock. So I really wasn't gonna go through the trouble of lubing them. If you wanna get some of these yourself, you can get them from the link down below in the description and use code HIPPIO to save 5%. Wow, pretty cool. I really like the aesthetic of these, and you know, I figure because you can see them, because it's a low profile build, it'll look really nice. I'm actually contractually obligated to have seven episodes of magic in this, so here's another one I guess? I don't know. So the switches are all on, and be careful in putting switches on to not bend any pins. I definitely bent like six, but you know, that's because I dropped them on, yeah. Normally I wouldn't care about the aesthetic of a switch, and I just go, oh they're cute or whatever, but because this is a low profile case, it's nice to have a switch that looks really good. And because I have a switch that looks really good, I need some keycaps that'll look really good. And don't worry, I've got the keycaps just for you. Right after we take a look at these stabilizers and go on a stabilizer lubing detour. Yeah, I don't know. Now these stabilizers came quote unquote factory lubed, but I'll let you decide whether or not they sound good. Oh, you want my opinion? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I guess they don't sound very good. So we're gonna be taking these out. Well, I mean, struggling to take these out. And then we'll be lubing them up. Okay, what are we at for magic in this episode? I don't even know, but here's another one, I guess. Yeah, so we've got them all taken out. I don't know why I even did magic for that. That only saved me like 10 seconds, gosh. Here I am dumbly holding up Carbon GS2 because I accidentally grabbed it to lube these and never realized it. We'll also be using Permatex Dielectric Grease, these little clippy boys to clip the legs on the stabilizers, and a stem holder and a brush. All of these are down in the description. So if you've never lubed stabilizers before, here's a mini stabilizer lubing tutorial time. Granted, for these, honestly, just don't even bother. Just get some Duroc plate mounts and then lube them this way. Now, the reason why I say that, uh, you'll find out later. Don't worry, you'll find out. So these actually did have a surprising amount of factory lube on them, but it was incredibly inconsistent, and I wiped it all off before lubing them myself. Now, because I'm incredibly silly, here's a slightly in-focus clipping, and then here's a lot of out-of-focus clipping. Good job, Hippio. That was great. Great work. You really captured how to clip a stabilizer. Yeah, watch somebody else's tutorial for that, I guess. So then I grab my brushy brush, get some luby lube, and brushy brush the inside of the, the housing. Why are we doing this bit, Hippio? Okay, you, you brush the inside of the housing. It's not that crazy. Uh, my theory with lubing stabilizers is more is more but not like too much more, just like a little bit more. And then I lube the stem out with a similar amount of Crytox, 205 G0. Don't use Carbon GS2, it's really bad for this job. 
Some people choose not to lube the stem, but I like to lube the stem as it ensures that you've really just got it and showed it who's boss, you know? You gotta show it who's boss. That's about how much lube you want on it, by the way. Next, we gotta gla gra oh, bleh, bleh, bleh. We gotta grab our glob of permatex. Wow, that was hard. Grab a glob of permatex and put it on the wire. Then put the stem in the housing with the two hole side facing the clip side and clip it into the bottom hole of the stem. Repeat with the other side of the wire. I'm not gonna say the glob glob thing again, that was ridiculous. And then assemble and congratulations, you've lubed a stabilizer. But you're gonna have to fine tune those by testing them out on the board, of course. Personally, I found these stabilizers impossible to tune and I did not get them sounding good. So that's, you know, that's what it is. I tried, I did genuinely try, but sometimes, you know, you can't reach perfection or anything. You, sometimes you can't even reach anything. So yeah, that's why I recommend Duroc plate mount stabilizers. You could check them out in the description or something. Yeah, but look, it's pretty. One of the tricks that I tried was to band-aid mod it with some climbing tape. Some of you might have seen this trick before. And you could technically do this on a board with soldered in switches. That's kind of why I left the switch in, just to show you that you could try this. But I would be very, very careful to not accidentally pop the wire out, otherwise you're screwed. So be very, very careful if you're doing this on a board with a soldered switch. Basically, I just put a little bit of tape under the stabilizers and it stops them from rattling around. This will help with some of the rattle, but not all of it. Oh, we're at the keycaps already. Okay, here we go, keycaps. So these are the Mojito keycaps that I got from Banggood. I've used them in a previous build, but that was back when I did silent films. Wow, so long ago. This is honestly one of the best sets that you can get from Banggood simply because it isn't a clone, and it's actually decent quality dice up PBT. At only $45, it has a decent amount of kitting support, and honestly, I would recommend this for anyone that has like a budget need for keycaps. And then, hey, you're not buying clones, so that's pretty cool. They're relatively thick and they sound okay, but if you're using north facing LEDs, these are cherry profiles, so that's a bit of a bummer. Anyways, let me just grab my mojito and then I'll just, oh, oh man, sorry guys, I spilled all over. Sorry, let me just, let me just clean this up real fast. Start, sorry, oh, yikes, I'm a clumsy little hip, yo. Oh, well, at least I got a drink for later, am I right? I don't really know what the creative energy is for this video, I'm sorry. Hippio's really all over the place. Okay, so thoughts on this build? Final thoughts on this build? Honestly, I wasn't that stoked with how it turned out, simply because I used cherry profile keycaps. If you were to do a build like this yourself, I'd recommend getting some keycaps that are not cherry profile, like OEM, XDA, DSA, etc. And then it'll sound pretty good. Now, the switches that I chose are very clacky, and the keycaps that I chose ended up being clacky and a tiny bit clicky because of the north facing LED interference. So as I mentioned before, the stabilizers I couldn't really get tuned, so they ended up sounding pretty bad. Also, as you noticed, it sounds clacky clicky. Some people might really like the sound profile, so you know I won't write it off for everyone, but just know that's what you'd get into. Also, bonus unboxing, Hippio unboxing time or something like that. So this is the RKG100, and it's incredibly similar to the 68. It's just long boy and has uh, rubber feet that go in and out. I often get asked a lot about full-size boards from people that are like, but, but my number pad really good, Hippio. I could never live without my number pad. Well, in that case, for all of you people, here you go. Here's something to take a look at. It's very similar to the Epomaker GK96. I think that's what it's called. I've done a review on that one too. Maybe I'll do a mod video of this in the future. Uh, if you want to see something like that, let me know. I just did not have the time to lube the 100 switches or 96 switches or whatever that was going on in here. That just sounds like a doozy. I'm very busy right now. I'm sorry, I'm very busy making videos for you guys. But final build thoughts overall, it was an interesting budget build. I think there's definitely better alternatives, but if you want to just buy something from Amazon, you could check this board out. I think for your average gamer, that they probably won't have any issues with this. But for your average enthusiast, there's probably better boards to check out, especially in the budget price range. Just a lot of them might not be in stock, so good luck with that. Anyways, I'll be leaving you guys with a sound test. Please watch the whole thing to support my YouTube algorithm overlords, as they only care about me if you watch my videos. Also to support my overlords, please hit subscribe, like this video, and leave a fun little sound test of your own in the comments. Also let me know what you thought of the pillow idea, and if you want to see more zany dumb ideas like that. 
because I kind of had fun doing it. Also, a special thank you to Cool Keys, The Mr. Man, Potty Platt, Curbboard, and Aquarius for being members of the Hippio's Chosen tier. Want to know why I said their names? Then consider hitting that join button down below. Bye!